After analysis video, which is truly the Scarinder, and as you guys know, haven't been able to record that many things recently. And while it look, doesn't look like that possibly will change, I will say at least join the Valhalla Pokemon League again for at least one more season. And you know, I'm gonna upload as much as I can from that league, both from my side but also from my opponents and teammates. So, my initial thoughts here are definitely gonna say that I changed my team quite a lot, I wasn't necessarily happy with how my draft ended up. As you guys saw in the intro, those are the 10 months that made the list and trust me there are a lot of changes that actually changed five Pokemon. While I won't go into individually why I did that and which Pokemon I changed, I will at least talk about the Pokemon that are in the team and what I hope to accomplish with it, this team in mind. So really with all that said, let's start off with the Pokemon I think will be the biggest mark against all my opponents and that's going to be Tapu Koko. So, uh, yeah, Tabaco was the first Pokemon I drafted, and probably the only Pokemon that really stood out for me as uh, Tabaco individually is one of those Pokemon that can solve a game uh, initially on its own. While many Pokemon that you draft are good team players, I definitely believe Tabaco is more of a soul wolf, really, just due to later train, really, just bring another type of a meta, and uh, it has a strong speed at 130, so a lot of really strong things going on with it initially, and of course, with later train, it's very tough for an opponent to actually defend that Pokemon out properly, well, which is something I really appreciate when I'm using the Pokemon, such as, of course, Tabu Koko. So, strong speed here, um, result probably the direct typing, which I think is an important aspect for any type of Wi Fi in mainland because. Electric is something that is very spammable, and uh, Tapu Koko represents the best of that with a terrain in mind. And as stated, good speed here, good moves are all in defense and whatnot. So it stands out as one of those really, really strong Pokemon. I'm looking forward to use this Pokemon quite a lot. The next Pokemon I picked up well, is also a Pokemon that I don't believe are as good of a team of player, more as it is individually strong, and that is Latios, which is one of the strongest dragons there is. Uh, that said, um, it compared to, of course, um, Sister, I should say, Latias, <laughs> which I definitely would say are more of a team player. Uh, Latias brings more of the offensive presence uh, with uh, one of very special attack and, of course, one of ten speed. It really becomes one of those really strong dragon types that has two ways of setting up in Calm Minds and Dragon Dance. And besides that, due to its combination, it really has a vast move pool, which, which makes it an excellent C user. To go with possible screening and whatnot, this is a Pokemon that really stands out as. A Pokemon that can solve a lot of roles depending on the use. Of course, Defog is one of those aspects to get with Memento, and of course, C Memento is also an aspect. So, overall, I really look forward to losing Latios, um, or using Latios, mainly because it's a Pokemon I haven't used at all. I've used Latios quite a lot, and while Healing Wish is nice, I really just want an offensive presence, and Latios resolves this stat that might actually be the strongest Pokemon I drafted to get it with Coco. This was followed up actually by Decidueye. Well, I had Shaman at first. The Decidueye, due to its ghost type, it really was the more desirable one. Uh, I used uh, this UI before. When I used it, it didn't have Shadow Sneak, so just having another layer in this Pokemon really does make it quite interesting. And uh, quite frankly, it has Defog also, so we have three Defoggers already. And of course, a good offensive presence. It definitely isn't one of the speedier ghost types nor grass types, but it does resolve a good aspect of it. It's best, definitely better between the ghost grass combinations in the game and of course with Roost in mind and Spirit Shackle. This is a Pokemon that uh, individually can do really well but it is a team player due to U-Turn and it also is a very very good Pokemon at checking things if they aren't able to spam horrible moves and which is something the situation does really well. It has a fair defensive stance and I think it's a fair offensive stat also so due to Nasty Plot and Sword stats, this is a Pokemon that can do a lot of rows and does it quite right. While it doesn't excel at anything, it do, definitely feels like a jack of all trades, and it's something I definitely need to fight team. The latter Pokemon here is Salasal, and um, um, I actually had Incineroar at first, but didn't necessarily um, didn't go too well with my budget, so I had to drop Incineroar. And uh, Salasal actually, due to its speed alone, actually is a very interesting aspect. Uh, poison and of course Fire is a pretty disgusting combination, actually, for any. <laughs> fairy type and I haven't necessarily had a 
poison type before that was offensively so capable as Salasal. So being able to have a fire type also makes it a very interesting Pokemon indeed. It definitely makes it tougher for my opposing Pokemon's uh, a steel type to do well against it, which is something I do appreciate. So that's his only big issue, I would say, is its bulk. So definitely it's obtainable to actually uh, have priority moves, which is something I have to watch out for. But 117 in speed is really something that I think my opponent is going to have a hard time handle. And of course, the NASA plot and stuff in mind, and of course, already arcing with Memento. This is a Pokemon that definitely can resolve the game alone, and quite frankly, its defensive typing do make it able to set up against a lot of things. And I think it's a good team player because it does need the defensive lead way to be able to come in effectively and actually resolve defensive issues which is something I think you can do once any type of a wall breaker or, or wall are resolved which, which makes us one of the more interesting pickups of this season. One of the more surprising picks up from my side was actually Jardos. Uh, I didn't pick up any of my, I usually do the bulky water type, I actually avoided that completely. While Jellicent was on my radar, um, I decided to go against that and it was mainly because I actually wanted an offensive water type and Jardos represents probably to get with Keldia the best of that and um, Jardos became incredible with sea moves in my own now because of sea bounce so it fills a void of a very very good um, mixed move pull with a very very fair setup in Dragon Dance it's a very very strong Pokemon it wasn't as impressive in generation 6 now I'm pretty close to saying that I think it surpasses its mega form um, it's subjective as best but quite frankly I think Jaros is going to be one of those really, really good Pokemon to be able to use and definitely going to make the majority of my game. And plus a very strong Pokemon to be able to fend off against Fire and Type and of course the Ground Phyllis. And uh, leaving me not so weak to Earthquake and this is something I think is really good depending on the Pokemon that I picked up after. But definitely going to say this about Jaros. It's an interesting Pokemon and I think um, with Moxie and Intimidate that I'm going to have a really really fun time finding out which way I could destroy my opponents and Jardos just just embraces that role really well which is something I definitely enjoy and this will fold up a really really interesting Pokemon I said it before but Hero Cross is a Pokemon I've personally used in a lot of seasons uh, both in VPL and in other leagues Hero Cross is something that um, offensively just really works well I tried bus hold for a lot of or for a few seasons I will say this, I really miss having the access to Guts, I really miss having the access to the speed here that um, Hero Cross represents. represent. While 85 isn't the most exclusive speed here in the game, of course it isn't, but it still is enough to make it a suitable scoffer, but also a really, really good Guts user, because so can, of course, status and then be able to retaliate with Flame or even. It is a Pokemon that is very hard to switch into, and I think the combination of fighting and bug really does make it hard for us. A lot of psychic types to really be effective, and of course, most psychic types tend to be a bit on the slow side. Well, uh, there are a few exceptions, but really, there aren't that many. We're, we're talking about a lot of twins, basically, and of course, like a sign and whatnot. So, overall, Hit Across, really good Pokemon. While it isn't the speediest Pokemon around, it still is a very, very strong, if not one of the strongest fighting types in the game, and it doesn't necessarily go working against it that. It has, of course, access to the Mega Horn, which of course helps quite a lot. And Earth Resistance, always nice with Earth Resistance. Now, Sneasel was picked up mainly out of Speed Tier, and of course, Pursuit Trapping always nice, though I didn't already have that option in another program I'm gonna pick. But uh, Sneasel due to Speed Tier, and of course, Priority made it more interesting than an individual Pokemon that I was going to pick first, which was actually Cryogonal. But I've used Cryogonal quite a lot, and while I do like the Pokemon myself quite a lot, I definitely want to say that Sneasel is in a more offensive aspect, which is something I really want to try out. Since I am a hyper-offensive player, uh, I really just wanted to uh, fix the team and craft it in such, and uh, hence Sneasel was created. Uh, however, Sneasel, while not necessarily one of the strongest Pokemon, I think it has 95 in attack, it really is a weak Pokemon by all aspects of inventory. It really does something that really works in its favor, and that is its stab combination of Dark and Ice. It really pushes it a little bit, and kind of goes a combination of even if Violite and, of course, Sword Stance, and I think this is a Pokemon that really can hold its own. While, much like Silasal, it needs a team to kind of help it out before it can actually sweep, it still is a Pokemon that individually can resolve games in the end, if it gets the ability or of course access to it, the setup it needs to actually resolve the games. So Sneasel, really cool, definitely gonna make sure to use that for a launch. 
of the Pokemon that I really look forward to is Gigalith, which is a Pokemon I had before, not in the Valor Pokemon League, however. Um, but I definitely just I wanted to draft a simple call in sand, and actually Gilith was the first one to come to mind, since Tyranitar is really expensive, and while the better of the two, I wouldn't say it's stronger by large. Uh, Gilith has an incredible bulk, uh, together with a really high HP stat, and now of course with Sandshrew in mind, it really is tough to KO, while it is um, a passive Pokemon, I definitely won't ignore that. It is a Pokemon that retaliates really hard, and much like Ryan on the really, its typing might hold it back, but definitely if you allow it to hit you, it's definitely gonna hit you for a lot of damage. So yeah, Gigalith is really cool, and of course, Gigalith is definitely more of a team player, and team players abroad is something I think is gonna help it out throughout the season itself. So the first teammate is Mega Steelix. Now, I was a bit of against this at first. I actually had Sand Slash at first and it no Mega Evolution. Um, and also I, scav I had Escavalier or Escavalier um, in my team. So those two went out and I changed for, of course, Mega Steelix. Mega Steelix is one of my favorite Megas. Um, I definitely, like I said, I was against it because I think Lou having a Steel Times that are losing its resistance and eyes are a bad thing but also at the same time i don't believe it hinders steelix that much because it has a really strong mixed bolt to get a good offensive combination that is the steel ground type combination and of course with sand force of mine now with gigalith it, it looks it, it looks kind of steady um it definitely is a program i think are that are really hard to switch into and with the heavy slam and gyro ball it really i think it just knocks it down apart i'm definitely gonna look forward to see how much hurts he brings once the sand is raging on. Of course, it's it's a great stealth rocker. Regular steel is definitely that. I do believe that Mega Steel, of course, clearly is better due to extra bulk, but also just overall, really just push the boundary that Pokemon really can be, which is why I really like this Pokemon quite a lot. While I do miss Wish Passing to keep the stamina up on this Pokemon, I do hope that the aspect of run is going to be making it sure it makes it become healthy enough. And the last Pokemon I drafted was of course Stoutland, and I really just, uh, there's really nothing else to say here. Um, I really like Stoutland, Stoutland of course is the, the mascot of my team and my YouTube channel. Stoutland in a sand is really, really strong. Um, very hard to prep for actually, uh, mainly because of the speed, it really just makes it very, very tough. Um, it has a really strong combination of defensive stats to get a 110 in attack, which really makes it hard to uh, fend off against. It definitely, it really aren't that many things that stuff is into it KOing. With Ban in mind, it couldn't even want it KO things. And that's a good aspect to it. Um, the only thing that was holding it is it was if I hadn't drafted the, um, the Sand Core, I actually had Rhydon in mind. Uh, just as I said, I would draft the Tauros instead, but since Rhydon or and Rhyperior win, I actually had no other option but actually ac taking access to Gigalith, which I thought was unfortunate. And at, at the same time, then I really just want to use Stoutland. I haven't actually used the Stoutland in the Valor Pokemon League, considering this is a fifth season. I say that's that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, so there's really no reason to be um, negative about that. I actually feel great to see the Stoutland is back, and I really hope it brings the things I need to the table. Um, I'm a bit rusty with Stoutland since I haven't used it quite a lot in Generation uh, 7 at all, but at the same time it is largely the same as it was in Generation 6. I don't believe it's going to be a big issue for me anyway. So that's the complete team and yeah, um, I really like this team. I think yeah, I, I ended up with a team that I think I'm going to be able to uh, kind of pull my own with. Um, there are a few issues with it, but I think I resolved the biggest issue, which was the speed tier. Um, I, well, I would say it's still on the low side. I at least have, I do believe, four Pokemon over 100, and or at least bar 110 and over. But then there's quite a jump between, you know, the CGI, Gyarados, and uh, Heracross, obviously not represented, base 90. And uh, I think even Stoutland represent roughly around 80. And then, of course, so that's the only, uh, Gigalith and the Steelix kind of falls way below there at around 30 and 25, which is really slow, but at the same time they are there for different reasons. They're there to soak damage, and I think they do that quite well. Um, I would say the only glaring weakness I have, and this is definitely a shout out to my opponents if they want to abuse that, though I don't believe it will work as well as they think it could, 
but clearly I have a possible ice weakness, which is something I think is unfortunate. I do believe I have two Pokemons that are really weak to it, and then basically I have a lot of Pokemon take neutral to it. Um, that said, it, it is an aspect of Sidua, and a lot of yours is definitely going to be forced to fend that off. I don't believe I have only Sneasel and Salasal to be able to resist in that type of damage, and well, Let's face it, there aren't necessarily the bulkiest Pokemon around, so that's something I have to keep in mind. Um, I am also kind of ground weakness, but or I have a ground weakness, but I do believe I have Pokemon to defend that up quite nicely. Uh, I think I have three Pokemon that are weak to ground. Uh, Gillis, Coco, and Steelix, but at the same time we do have um, Lodos, which is Floater, we have Jaros, which is Floating, and Decidueye and Heracross so actually take resistant damage to us that. So, I think we're fine. Um, another kind of weird weakness is the, um, of course, finding weakness, but I don't believe it is as bad as one would think. While Sneasel, Gildas, and Stuffling don't necessarily like that, but of course, uh, Jardos, I don't believe it's a big issue because Jardos, Latias, Koku, and of course, um, um, Salasal, Heracross are resistant to it, and of course, the Sidui are immune to it, so yeah, I don't believe that's a big deal. I actually do think I cover my typing combination quite fair. Uh, I have things to watch out for, most certainly, but I don't believe I am threatened by most things. I think I have the combination to fend off against any team I could possibly fend off, so even though this is a team that I would say has the lower tier the Pokemon in it, I definitely believe my team is the one that has most lower tier Pokemon in their team. Uh, I still believe that this team combination is one of the better strongly uh, constructed and this is of course with a lot of changes in mind because obviously before the changes this team was really really rough and definitely needed a lot of polish and definitely believe that I couldn't fix that with the initial changes I had so I had to go out of my way and actually forcefully make my team tier wise weaker but synergy wise stronger I think I, I think I was successful in doing that. So, with that said, I really want to thank you guys for watching this episode, and of course, make sure to follow us throughout this season. We're going to have nine weeks of regular battles, and then we'll follow up on that, whether or not we make playoff or not. But with this team, I don't believe that's going to be an issue. Uh, so, with that said, guys, thank you for always watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which it will be not in four months. It will definitely be <laughs> more videos coming up. I really feel bad for, uh, for, for not being able to record stuff for you guys. You'd have to lose some more than this. And uh, I really enjoy recording. I need this myself, to be honest, to keep myself calm from time to time. So that's it, guys. Like I said, yet again, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye.